that we have Passport set up and we can let it use our session to store data, we need to give it some functions so that it can write um, data into the session as well as retrieve the user from the session as well. And um, the way you do this is you have to provide a serialized function which allows you to write data about a user into the session and a deserialized function which lets us retrieve the user's full details from that session. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to need to use uh, MongoDB for this um, because that's a database we'll be storing our data in. And uh, you can't use Mongoose for this challenge, unfortunately. So we have to use the proper MongoDB NPM package. And the way you install that is just um, NPM install MongoDB like this. And uh, just wait for that to happen. So to provide Passport with a serialized and deserialized function, you use the serialize user and you give the function there, and then you use dot deserialize user and we give our function there. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, we've already required Passport here, so we can just call methods on Passport. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say Passport dot serialize user. And this is where we'll give our function. And the function takes in a few. So remember the the the, the prop the um purpose of the serialized function is to take a f user's full details. So this can be something like from a form or something, and we have to put that into a cookie. And we're only storing the users a small amount of the user's data in a, in the cookies because um. We want to make sure that we keep the size small and we just need the bare details that we can then use to fetch all the other details from. So this is to uh, save user ID to a cookie. So, and we're just going to be storing the ID for this one. So what this is, is you have to give it a function in here. And this function takes in, um, I think it takes in two things, yeah. So the first thing it takes in is a user object and this user right here is basically a MongoDB document that we've returned. So when we uh, click login or something, we'll go to the database and we'll find the Mongo or create a MongoDB document. And then we'll get this returned as user and we'll give this whole user document to the serialized user function to store the appropriate data into the cookie. And the next thing we give it is a done function. And in the done function, you can basically tell it exactly what to save into the cookie. And we can do whatever we want here and we can determine what exactly we want to put into our cookie. So, um, so we'll just call the done function here because we just want to be storing our user's ID into the cookie because then we can use that ID to find the user's full details. So here we just want to give the, to remember this user here where it's a user document that has been returned. Um, so this is the just the ID field of the user like this. And this is, you can't just use dot ID here because we're working with MongoDB and not Mongo. So you have to use this underscore ID like this. Um, actually, we have to give two arguments to this done function actually. So um, the other argument that we have to give it is an error. So if there was an error at any point in your process, you'll have that error to work with. And you can give this to the done function as well. But since there's no error, or we assume there's no error when we're doing it here, we can just give null here. And this will make sure that we just save the user ID. So again, what this does is um, it'll take in a user document. So we'll either log in or register, we'll put the details or fetch the details from MongoDB and we'll get this user document. And then from this, we want to give to the done function as a second argument, the user ID. And this will be written into the session cookie. So the next thing we need to do is specify the deserialize users function. So you, to do that, we do passport dot deserialize user. And the purpose of this function is to basically, uh, let's say, retrieve um, user details from cookie. Um, this is actually quite complex, so I'm just trying to explain it to the, the way I best understand it. So what this will take in is it will take in the user ID from the cookie. So we can just say user ID here. And it will also take in a done function. And into this done function, like we did here, we can say um, what user details that we want to make available. So our purpose here is basically use this ID to look in the database and then to uh, find the user 
document for that. And then we just want to give that user document to the done function. So that's all we need to do here. Um, so we're going to be using a MongoDB method to do this. And um, this DB right here is going to be um, a variable that we can use to access our database and call methods on. But we don't, we haven't created it yet, but we don't have to worry about it. We'll be doing that later. It's a bit annoying because like you do stuff before you can actually use these like variables, but just assume here that this DB right here is going to be um, a way to access our database and it's just small DB here. Again, we haven't set this up yet. And uh, we wanna call a MongoDB method uh, to find one document. So if I just scroll down a little bit here, um, we want to find a document with a query. So yeah, this one right here. So we, we're going to say db.collection and then the name of our collection. And our collection is going to be called users for this challenge. And we want to call the find one method here. This is similar to the mongoose method, by the way, but again, we're working with Mongo TV, not, not mongoose. And we can give a query object um, as the first argument. So we can say that we want the, um, hang on, we want the ID of that document. So the ID field, remember it's underscore ID is how it's stored in MongoDB. And we want it to be equal to this uh, user ID that we took in here. But we can't just give the user ID for some reason. We have to convert it into a MongoDB object ID first. And that's where we need the object ID constructor. So to get that, um, what you want to do here is just say, um, I'm just going to remove this because I don't know why it's been added. Uh, just say let uh, object ID, and this is a constructor, so just use capitals here, equals require. And we want to requ uh, require and we want to require MongoDB and we want to require object ID from it. And what we can now do here is you can say new object ID and we can give the ID from our cookie, so which is just the user ID right here. Um, again, yeah, you have to create a new object ID instance to be able to use it in the um, ID query right here. So again, what this does so far is it'll get the user ID from our cookie and it will create a new object ID with it that we can give to a query from MongoDB to find the document for that user to get their details. So as in Mongoose, the second argument is a callback function and it takes an error and our result, which I'm just gonna call a document. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna keep the names the same as this. It's a result or a document, so I'm just gonna call it doc. And because these challenges are marked explicitly line by line, so you want to make sure that you use the exact same uh, variable names that they've used here. So now that we have this doc, uh, what we can do is we can call the done function again to give this doc. And the first argument is an error, but we're going to assume that we don't have an error. So I'm just going to give null here. And the second argument that you give is the uh, document right here. And then this document will contain all the details of our users. So it'll contain their like username, their email, their real name or whatever. And uh, this document right here, once we've done all of this, it'll be available for every, since we used a, since we mounted passport.session for all the requests, all the requests will now have a requested.user field and this document will be available there and we can get whatever details that we want from there. So once again, what this does is actually, you know what, we'll complete the challenge and then I'll explain it. So uh, this is essentially what you need to do here. So the first thing we need to do um, in our um, project is we want to install um, MongoDB. So in here, just do npm install MongoDB and that will go ahead and install the latest version of MongoDB for us. And it can take some time, so we just have to be a little bit patient. So then we, what we want to do is we want to put in these um, serialized and deserialized functions. So I'm just going to copy that and paste them into here. Um, that's still running. So again, what this does is um, it'll take in a user document that we give it and it will put the ID into a cookie for us. And what this does is it takes in the ID from the cookie and it finds uh, from the user's collection a document which has that ID 
as a, as the ID from our cookie, and then it will give this document to the done function, and then this um, user or this document right here will be available in every request call, and it will be called request.user. So I'm just gonna run refresh here just so that we can get um, this to launch in our um, app. So if we look at package.json now, we can see that we have MongoDB installed. So what we need to do now is to require um, the object ID. So we can say let object ID equals uh, require, and then we wanna require MongoDB here. And also, um, yeah, so that, that error has gone away. Um, since we don't have um, a connection to a database right now because this is undefined and we haven't set up the database, we're never going to get this doc right here and it will always throw an error. So what we want to do is, like they said here, just, just give null for now because um, because we're never going to get this doc until we set up this database and it's going to throw an error. So if we just give null now just for the temporarily, this challenge will pass. So that should be everything we need to do here. So I'm just going to copy this uh, live app here and I'm going to submit it and see what happens. Okay, so it's, it says test timed out. Let's just have a look at what's happened here. It might just be because my project was um, asleep. So I just figured out why it wasn't working before. It's because in the last video when I installed um, Express and Passport using this thing right here, um, despite it being in package.json, glitch failed to actually install it properly. So I've just installed them again through the terminal. And also, um, when I copied this from here, I had a space after the null, and then I didn't have a space before the user ID. But this line gets marked exactly as it is, so make sure that you have null and then a comma immediately after it, and then a space and then user ID. It's such a bad way of marking this, but um, that's exactly how you're supposed to do it, just like this. And then if you go ahead and submit this, um, you should see that all the tests have passed. Again, it's really, really annoying, but that's the only way to do it.